Hi. Uh, welcome to another episode of Dude, Druids Down Under Discuss Everything. I'm Julie, and tonight I thought I'd have a chat with you about the Oem um, and tree energies. And uh, I wonder if anyone's going to come in, but um, if they don't, I'm just going to keep talking anyway and um, get right to it. So I want to get a little bit academic on this one and um, start talking a bit about the history of Oem and how um, often what what we think is Oem isn't necessarily um, historically hi <laughs> what what Oem was, um, but it's quite a modern tradition that um, has developed in the last uh, hundred years or so. Um, so my first introduction to the Oem was with this book, The Tree Oem by Glennie Kindred, which is really quite lovely. It's got lots of beautiful illustrations in it and um, has explanations about the different energies of the trees and when I was in England I really enjoyed going around looking at the different trees and finding out what they were like and how to um, identify them and finding out about the different energies and things like that. And um, a lot of us find out about the OM and get right into that divinatory aspect of, of looking at the tree energies and thinking of them as a magical system. But um, I've found recently, um, in, in looking at it in a bit more depth, that there's actually so much more to it than that. And it's, uh, it's in some ways, it really is this modern idea. So um, I don't, I don't want to like chuck out the idea of it being a, a divinatory tool or, or that tree energies work the way that we, we feel they do now. It's a modern tradition and it does have its roots in um, in the past and in the ancient traditions, but uh, in not in the ways that we might always think. So it's quite a complex history and I'm really just scratching the surface. I know there's a lot more to it um, and there's a hell of a lot to read. So... Um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm just sharing with you where I'm at with it. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Hi, Aiden. Hi, Natalie. So awesome to, to have you here. So I'm talking about the uh, Oem and, um, and the, the history of it. So um, something... So get, going right back to the beginning of it, the earliest examples that we have of Oem inscriptions um, don't have any explanation other than you know, being themselves. They're um, stone boundary markers usually, either boundary markers or gravestones. They, they think that they were those because they were um, pretty much just marked with names. And we know in the Breton Laws, um, which has all these um, rules laid out about how people could claim land, um, setting up, erecting a stone with your name on it was part of that process. So that's something that we know that the Owen was used for. So basically, it was an alphabet for writing down people's names for land ownership, but there was no divinatory aspect to that and no tree associations. However, there are um, mentions of, of it being used as a divinatory tool, um, or at least the letters being used as a divinatory tool in some of the mythology, so we know that that was something that happened. Um, <coughs> sorry, I've got a bit of a cold. <coughs> So the so up until um, when it starts getting written about in the in 1391 in a book called the Book of Ballymote, and in 1416 in the Book of Lecan, I don't know how to pronounce that Lecan, L-E-C-A-N. Um, they that's that's when they explain uh, the meanings of the letters and the um, that the the Oem had different assigned meanings. So that's where we get the list of trees, um, where Oem gets that relationship from. But there's also lists of famous sows and uh, river pools and fortresses and birds and colours and kings and waters and dogs and foods and all kinds of other things. So is it all about trees? You know, you have to ask that question um, when you come across something like that. Perhaps I, I would just wonder sometimes if it was just like an alphabet and in teaching an alphabet you say 
A is for apple, B is for ball, C is for cat, D is for dog. Is there something sacred about apple and ball and cat and dog? Maybe not. But obviously trees did have um, uh, esoteric meaning in Celtic culture, but whether or not that was assigned to the trees, we don't, um, we don't know. Um, that idea perhaps came about um, uh, uh, sorry, we don't we don't know whether the, that tree, uh, esoteric tree meaning was assigned to the oem. We don't know for sure. There's a lot that we don't actually know about the oem. And often when you read even very, very good books about this, they'll say, we just don't know. And we're, we're going on our own Arwen in explaining this. So, um, yeah, so really, and, and it was quite mind-blowing to me when I found this out. And um, I haven't read the whole thing because it's enormous, but reading um, The White Goddess by Robert Graves um, was really quite eye-opening because um, he, he goes through the, um, the 13 of the Oem. So there's, there's either, um, there's originally 20 Oem and, um, and then they added five more later when they needed other letters for something. Uh, to, to write in a different way um, but he uses 13 because he's sourcing from another modern writer and um, he takes all these crazy leaps really um, or creative leaps um, in his uh, analysis of the Oem and, um, and that's where we get things like the Celtic tree calendar or the Celtic zodiac they actually have no historical basis other than Robert Graves thought it seemed sensible. It was a, a creative, um, creative, he, he made it up, but very creatively. And it is, it seems quite beautiful. And obviously some people get something out of it. Um, and, and I think there's, there's something really important there about, um, realizing that things are being created, that there are these modern traditions that are working for people but they don't necessarily have their roots in history. They're, they're new. Um, and so, so the other thing that he um, brought into that idea of the OM, I believe, is the idea that the trees have a kind of uh, archetypal energy, that you can look at um, a tree at anywhere and that that tree will have a, a sort of sense or a, an essence about it that we can learn from. What an amazing idea, but I don't know um, whether that idea was specifically in Celtic history. I think it's much more a, um, a product of a modern school of thought that, that came out of um, at, at the particular time when he was writing. There were um, a lot of writers, people like Margaret Murray, who was quite influential to Gerald Gardner, and other people before him. Um, I believe James Fraser was another one, but I haven't gotten into reading his epic tome of a book either, but I will one day. Um, but yeah, so there were these people that were quite influential and their, their idea was basically that there was a, um, a homogenous, um, nature-based uh, religion all over Europe, from, from India all the way to the Celtic lands, all up to Russia, down to Greece, Rome, uh, Egypt, and that everything was pretty much the same before pre-Christian, um, but yeah, in pre-Christian times, before Christianity um, took over most of those places. So um, there was this assumption that you could basically take an idea from Roman thought or from Hindu thought or from Nordic, and you know, all these mythologies and practices and things that they did in different places and say, oh, well, because the Greeks had this idea about one tree, that means it means this in the Celtic system. And so that's how Robert Graves ended up putting together this kind of really quite a wild explanation of what the tree meanings were. And he also was looking at his own um, intuition about them, about the nature of the tree. And um, you know, through doing this, through all these comparisons, he actually has come up with something quite special. And, and it's really influenced the way that we think about the idea of Oem in the modern practice. But 
we, you, I just feel like we really need to recognise that that's not how it was for the Celtic people that made up the Oum originally. For them it was an alphabet and um, though it was used in divinatory ways, it might not have been through that idea of a tree divination. And um, yeah, I suppose I'm, I'm not trying to change anything or, um, you know, mess up anyone's ideas or anything. I'm just trying to say there's this history and it's awesome to, to know more about where these things come from and, um, and to recognise that there are these new things emerging in the, the psychology of modern spirituality that, you know, are, are quite new and amazing. Um, even though they didn't think at the time that they were finding something new, they thought that they were, like, Robert Graves really thought that he was discovering this universal truth about trees and about um, the symbolism behind them. So, <clears throat> just have a drink. So I think it actually was also probably people like Carl Jung that were quite influential in this idea too, this idea of the universal archetypes or the, the collective unconscious, that there's this, this sort of universal essence of something that you can find um, by understanding its nature um, is quite a, a modern idea and that was definitely something that you can see in how Graves was writing about that and, and how it's become something that we do now in our modern practice. Um, uh, <clears throat> sorry, just have a look at my notes. So one of the, the sources that Graves did use, though, that was um, a Celtic source, was the Card Corvai. So um, it's... The Battle of the Trees is the the name of the poem, and um, he he's quite a he is a quite a wild thinker, quite a creative thinker, because he decides to retranslate this poem to make it more poetic, um, to make it better, and then uses his own poem, his own <laughs> source, as as a source for for what he's going to write about it. So I thought that was quite interesting, but um, I think that uh, there's actually a lot of other interesting things that we can look at. Like if we recognise that that idea about archetypal tree energies has actually come from graves, then it can actually be quite freeing because it can allow us to look at those primary sources of the Celtic sources um, in a slightly different way. If we're not expecting to find a tree oem like we have, um, like we work with in the modern tradition, um, you know, maybe that's not there. Maybe that was a modern idea. It actually helps us to open our minds a bit to see what is there and um, and find something um, that might be even more interesting. Um, so there certainly is a lot of reverence and respect for trees and their magical natures in Celtic culture. We have... Um, uh, there are some beautiful books out there about that, that really do go into a bit more detail into the the history of different herbs and trees and, and what, what the, the primary sources and Celtic sources tell us about them. And this is one that I really like. The, it's called A Druid's Herbal of Sacred Tree Medicine by Ellen Everett Hopman, and it's really, really great. Um, and, yeah, we can, we can learn a lot from, from books like that uh, about those traditional uh, meanings and what, what that, that mindset was of those ancestors of ours. So we definitely know that they use them for divination, the, the letters, because that's in some of the mythology. That might not have been about trees. Um, we know that they did have sacred trees, so trees were definitely important. And we know that they did use trees to name the Oum, but that wasn't the only thing that they used to name the Oum. There were all of these other lists of things that they used as well. So it's possible that they weren't specifically about... Um, just the trees but um, in the Breton laws uh, there's like different grades of trees or, or tribes of trees or something um, and they they have different sort of hierarchies and there were different fines for which trees uh, if you were to cut down a tree or something like that so um, yeah different different ones had different values so they definitely valued trees highly 
Um, and we know that there, there are stories about when Christians came to Ireland and the way of um, cutting off the power of um, all the, I don't know whether it was the Druids or the, just the, the people that were in power so that the church could take control, they would cut down the tribal trees. So people were meeting in places with these enormous trees and they said they, they could shelter a thousand men, things like that. Um, where, where people would come and meet and um, have counsel together, basically. So um, as an act of like, defiance, they would cut down these sacred trees um, to you know, cut off the, the power of the people. And I wonder if that poem, um, the Card Gothai, Card Gothai, The Battle of the Trees, might actually not have been about tree meanings in an esoteric sense, but it might have been about these different tribes of people that are identified with certain powerful trees. So there are these things that we might be able to uncover if we if we take away that assumption that, that it's all about tree energies um, that, that might be just as interesting. Uh, obviously, we also know that there are other reasons why, why trees are important. There were the hazels in the, the well, the symbol of wisdom. There were apples on a branch that were um, uh, the silver branch that gives you access to the fairy realm, golden apples and um, other references to sacred trees in the mythology. So it's definitely um, tree magic is definitely a part of the Celtic mindset. It's just um, this assumption that, that the Oum had to do with it necessarily. I don't know. That just seems to be something that I'm I'm coming across um, a bit in my research. And if you think I'm wrong, well, there's nothing more informative than being wrong on the internet. So do let me know. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So really, that that's uh, all I wanted to say. Um, thanks for having a listen, and uh, I hope it's sparked some ideas or made you think about stuff or made you want to tell me that I'm wrong, <laughs> um, that would be really great to hear what you think about it also. Yeah, I will um, have a chat with you in the comments. See you later.